So there is this awesome free cybersecurity tool that you can get and you can use it to learn about security monitoring and it's called Wazo or Wasa. And the other best part is that it's also open source so you can take a look at how it's being built, how it is being used to do all this analysis of different type of security attacks, different types of malicious software. It could be running inside of the operating system and so on. And I'm going to be teaching you today how to install it and also how to operate on it, for example, getting the endpoints installed with the agent, so we're collecting the tallymates and sending it back to the M-ship. And of course, we'll be doing some hacking along the way to show you how it's done, and then after which we detect that directly from Wazo. So now in terms of architecture, of course you have the M-ship. So in this case, we have the Wazo. So I'm going to call it the blue over here. And I'm going to draw a spaceship so that this is the Marship where we'll be collecting and analyzing all of this different events. So you'll be doing things like what I call security analysis, right? So, of course, you first have the lock collection, so you're collecting all these different types of locks, either from the operating system itself, it can be from network devices, and then after of which we do what we call as analysis. So in security analysis, we're looking at, hey, from this particular log later on, we'll take a look at some of them examples, is for example, if there is a fail authentication like multiple retries, multiple failures to authenticate, so that could be an example of an attack like a brute force against CureShell, or it could also be, say, for example, a SQL injection attack directly against a HTTP server that you have, so that may also appear in the logs. And from there, we're doing all this different type of analysis, and this analysis are powered by rules. So the security rules are what helps us determine whether a security event that has occurred from the locks is considered as a malicious event. And most importantly, we also have the devices. So in this case, it could be your server. So I have a Ubuntu server, and then of course we have an agent installed onto it that is then sending the tally matri or the locks over into the MERS ship. So of course you can also have your network devices that can also have this type of tally matri. And of course they'll be sending them likewise over into the MHIP. And of course the more devices that you have, you can install the agent easily on them. And as you install them, you'll be targeting specific specifically. All right, where are the lock sources? So it could be INV VAR slash log, etc. Okay, so all these are the different places that are storing locks and you want to target those AORs so that you can analyze them directly from the MARIP. So the MARIP is doing all of this heavy lifting for you. So instead of doing the compute directly on devices itself, if you do that, that could lead to over-utilization of the compute because many of these servers are used for other things, say for example, is an application server, it's an API and so on, and that's the primary goal. And what you want to do is then to take those logs, stream them over into a security monitoring system. In this case, we have, of course, Wazuwasa that is then doing all this analysis for you. So you are putting those heavy lifting all right, offloading them over into a separate compute server. So right now I'm logging over into a Ubuntu server and I'm on the website with O and this is the documentation and we are in quick start. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have the instructions here. So you have the curl packages, all right? And not of to way to followed by a sudo bash, slazu install. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and open up a terminal and let me just zoom in a little more. Okay, so what I'll do now is go ahead and copy it, paste it, hit enter on that, enter my password. Of course, my password is password or 12345678. Either of this two are my password. You can try logging into my Gmail, Hotmail, whatever, because why, you know, people think that a hacker, professional hacker like myself is going to use some super complex, difficult to remember kind of password. But the reality is, no, I use a simple password. Uh, anyways, back to the topic. Oh, done. Okay, cool. Just when I want to switch over, so it's done now, you can access the web interface at 443. This is the admin and this is the password. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at it all. Right, so let's go over into 443. So what is my IP address, IPA? So I got 192168011151. I'm heading over to Firefox now. Let's go ahead and ENT through that one hit, enter on this click, advance click, accept the risk and continue, enter admin and of course a password. It's really long secure password. Um, let's go and enter that, not enter copy and paste. Okay, I can't, I can't remember this paste. It click, login, loading, okay. Okay, five checks here, done perfect. Okay, we're in, this is it, the setup, the installation has completed. It's really, really nice. I love it. I think this is like one of those things that I really like, and there's going to be a lot of good stuff that can come out from it, all right? So the next thing we'll be doing, just going through a dashboard walkthrough, okay? And then after which agent installation, 
because ultimately you need the agent to be running the agents like I shared earlier. Are the ones that you're doing your security monitoring, you want to know what's going on, is it being attacked, is there a compromise, is there a misconfiguration, those are the things that you want to watch out for. Okay, from the dashboard itself, it's pretty straightforward, so you have the last 24 hours alert, so like critical severity, and the rule level goes from 0 to 15, so the higher means the more critical the severity is, and of course the low could be things that are informational, like a misconfiguration or small configuration that is happening inside the target endpoint, and then medium high, and all this would be very likely the server or the asset. The IT asset is already compromised, and you want to quickly take a look at that so you can filter by clicking onto any of the severity categories. And then, of course, on the left, you have your agents. So your agents are where you are, actively monitoring them, and you're communicating with it. And, of course, I already have a couple of agents plus in into my servers. And what we're going to do is I'm going to uninstall them, and I'll walk through the installation process with you so that you know what's going on. There are specific modules or sections within Wazoo, so you have the endpoint security. So you have like configuration assessment, which I thought is really good, because most of the time when a hack occurs, it's typically because of a misconfiguration. Say, for example, you have SSH access, and instead of using a key, you have a password. All right, so that is considered one of those misconfigurations and can be many others. Then you have malware detection. Is there some kind of bad, malicious software within the endpoint, right? So you're able to integrate that with Virus Total. If you want to follow, integrity monitoring is pretty cool, because what it does, you can target specific directories, and you can monitor them to see and look at changes for it so let's say you have a website and someone gain access to your site and there is a defacement what you can do is you can pick it up real quick directly from the f integrity monitoring if you want to train intelligence is is very fun because this is the part where you're going to be able to look directly into the endpoint and say hey what are events occurring what are the alerts that are being highlighted by my rules by my security rules that i was sharing with you in your architecture earlier you know with vulnerability detection and so on and so Fourth, so lots of good stuff. And the other really good thing as well is, of course, you also have the integration with cloud workloads like Amazon Web Services. So if your workload's on AWS, you are likewise able to integrate that. Say, for example, they have the integration with CloudTrail that's able to lock everything of who is doing what in the AWS control plane. So again, lots of great integration here. And we'll cover some of the key ones, the core modules here, so that we understand how to get started. And then later on, as you're exploring them, a lot of them will be up to you to decide the kind of security scenarios that you want to walk through. And of course, I got a couple of them for you today. One is through a secure shell brute force, and then the second one will be through reverse shells. Okay, click on three lines, scroll down, search for server management, click on it. Something called deploy new agent. Okay, so this is the one that we want to click on to. This is the one that will give us the instructions to do the installation. So go ahead and click on that. In my case, I am going to be installing it onto Linux server. So in this case, I'm going to select onto Deb AMD 64. You can do it for Windows, for Mac OS. So this is really cool. So you scroll down further. What is the server? The modders ship. What is the IP address of that? So in this case, 192.168.95.128151. So this is the IP address of the Linux server that is running Wazoo. Okay, okay, so this is the Mars ship. So once you have that, you can give the agent a name. Okay, so in my case, maybe I'll just give it Linux server. Okay, or you Linux endpoint. All right, scroll down. We use the default existing group. So you can again have different kind of policies for each of the groups. Then with that, that's it. This is the command. All right, just run this command directly into the target server. Perfect. So this is my endpoint. I'll go ahead and hit enter on this downloading. Preparing to unpack, setting up. Okay, this is pretty fast. Let me go back over into the server and see what else. So we just have to do a sudo system ctl daemon reload enable and start the wazoo agent. So let's go and do that. Okay, so we have the suit sudo system ctl enable wazoo agent sudo system ctl enable wazoo agent. Now heading back over to wo server, I can scroll all the way down and I can see right here I have Kaylee endpoint. So it's up, it's up and running. So perfect. I can click onto it, and right here we have the overview of things. So this is really nice because we can see a lot of things going on. So we have, of course, the IP address, right? The version, the operating system, and we have the compliance information. So if you are working in specific sectors, you may have requirements against, say, for example, payment cut industry, data security standard, general data protection regulation, and so on. So you can select onto them. And what it does, it, it does a check against the server and say, hey, 
Are you align are your security controls configurations within the operating system? Is it aligned to some of this compliance requirements? Okay, so this is really neat. And of course, we have some events going on like a defense evasion, and then we have the SKA. So this is a scan, a security scan against the target. And let's go, ah, and take a look at this. Let's go and click on that so we can see right here there are certain things going on. So CIS stands for Center for Internet Security, and of course you have the Linux server. So this is a benchmark and we can see the score OK. We have lots of failures, so it would give examples like ensure SSH hardening, port should not be 22. Changing the default port, you may reduce the number of successful attacks from zombie bots. An attacker or bot doing port scanning can quickly identify your SSH port, so this is a fill result. And of course there's a remediation instruction for you. And this is really good because we're trying to learn cybersecurity. Having guidance like this and having experience, hands-on experience, cements your understanding about how some of these security controls work, particularly in the world of security operations, in the world security monitoring. So this is a really good start, and I highly recommend that you try this out, okay? And typically, if you are a security analyst, you are a defender. You have to look and comply to a lot of all this different security standards depending on where you work at. And all these are really critical because properly configured, your systems are the less probability of you getting compromised. So this is an important starting point for you as a defender, okay? Or even as a hacker because you want to know what kind of security controls might be implemented directly onto those workloads. Okay, now, as you can see here, I have performed a brute force attack and also I have performed a netcat shell attack on my another system. This log has been captured here. It can help you to detect the exact point of view. And also when someone attack like scanning, brute forcing their IP will be captured here and then you can claim report against hack. So that's it. That was a really awesome beginner tutorial on security monitoring with where we learned how to install it. We learned how to set it up to the agent installation deployment into a target server. We were looking at some of the rules that's available. Some of them are out of the box. Some of them just require a little bit more customization and we're able to get it up and running. So that was really good. So stay tuned for even more exciting tutorials coming your way. So remember, turn on notification, turn on subscription to the channel so they can learn even more on cybersecurity. Take care.